Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, February 20, 2024. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We have a lot of things to discuss that helps us look at the charts in a variety of different ways, all working toward what? Putting the puzzle pieces together to come up with the conclusion. Where's the market headed? What's going on? Where's the fake out operations? What just happened that we may not notice? All those things and a whole lot more is what we're going to discuss in this video today. Let's start with a little bit of cycles. Some time ago, I discovered a way to determine what I'll call a short-term cycle that happens to be happening at present. So it's kind of a today, tomorrow thing. We talked about it in the live room this morning. And the point here is we're looking for a short-term turn. Could it have happened today at today's low? Could it happen tomorrow at an intraday turn? Absolutely. Any of those things are possible. We're looking for a short-term low because the market's trading down today, tomorrow. Does it guarantee we're going to get it? No, there are no guarantees in the market. This is one of those things that works the large majority of the time, not necessarily every time. On Wednesday, we have a release of the phony Fed minutes. Is that a market moving event? Not by itself generally. However, if the market moves, it can certainly be pinned on as the excuse, the Fed minutes. It's of note. It's an awareness. It's really just a bunch of hocus pocus. What are the Fed minutes? They're what the Fed wants the public to think was discussed at the meeting not necessarily everything was discussed at the meeting. By the way, how do we do in the live room today and inside the numbers? Why don't you post anything you want about those trades that happened this morning inside the numbers and in the live room? For example, live room, we had NVIDIA, Roku, Walmart, Spiders several times. Let's get back to something on the daily chart of the Spiders I think is very important. We're talking home base. What's home base? The 20 period moving average. All right, fair enough. So they came close here on the 13th of this month. And here they are again at today's low. They came close one more time, but they can't or won't touch the 20 period moving average. Is that a fake out operation in the making or a hint that the market is so strong that it can't even get to the 20 period moving average to run a legitimate test, yet comes up short because she's so bullish. We don't know which one it is, but we're gonna find out in short order. Remember, above all the moving averages, the trend is what? Is your pen pal, is your friend. What's another thing on the chart that some traders may not be aware of or notice, but it stands out at me like a sore thumb? Well, let's harken back. Let's go back to last week. The market put in this high. And if you remember, just a couple of days before that, it was Wednesday, Thursday. It happened on Monday. I was looking for a top. I was looking for a turn. So it took a couple of extra sessions. They had the one-day wonder and they rallied back. But what did they do? They put in a lower high. Still above all the moving averages, the trend is your friend. But remember, things morph from a shorter time frame onto larger time frames. So from an intraday perspective, and here's an hourly chart, the trend isn't so firmly up because all the moving averages are below price. That's not the case, for example, on the hourly chart. Two-hour chart, all of a sudden below the 50 period moving average on the two-hour chart, the trend is not up any longer. It's not terrible. You still have the 100 and 200 below, but from a shorter term perspective, things may be morphing. It's an awareness. We need to know about this. What about something else that sticks out at me like a sore thumb, but some traders may not notice? On this intraday chart, it's pretty obvious there's an open gap here that wasn't filled, at least to me, because I know about it. It's 494.14. 
Now, what's interesting to me is a couple of things. First, they tried to fill the gap. They came close. They bounced away. Look what happened today. They came close again and bounced away. So here's where my antenna goes up and I say, all right, it's one of two things. The market's so strong, like the discussion we had about the 20-period moving average on the daily chart, that if they just can't hit it, in my case, I believe they won't hit it. They always can. It's a choice. There are no accidents or coincidences. The market's always making a choice. It's my job, our job as analysts, as traders, to interpret what the market is doing to come up with the conclusion of what the next phase is going to be. Hey, you doing? So I'm saying they missed that gap once. They missed it twice today. Smells like a fake out operation on its face. Okay, fair enough. Now, where can we take off the fake out operation? Well, technically above today's high, closing candles above today's high opens the door for the gap left open on Friday. And if they're up there, that's taking off the fact that that unfinished business slash open gap is still looming slash lurking, at least for the time being. But while they're below today's high, and this is the number we're talking about, today's high is 498.41. As long as they're below today's high, that number is still lurking. It's still unfinished business and will remain unfinished business until filled. But at the very least, it's curious to me why twice in a row they didn't hit it. Smells like a rope dope kind of like three-card Monty. Once again, anybody make money today inside the numbers? How about the live room? How about our ongoing Jason situation? This is one of the traders from inside the numbers. Sends me this screenshot, not every day, but he sends it to me a few times already last week. And here's another one today up. $4,000 at the start of the day was a $35,000 account. Jason started with 10K in this account. There's more stuff like that. Let's go over the numbers. We'll start with an early pivot, but it really didn't come into play in the early part of the session, 498. But we'll refine the numbers as time goes on, as you know, as we get closer to the opening bell. So what do we have? Below that, it opens the door for what? 496 and a quarter. Anybody think that was important? Yep, I think so. You can see it bounce right off that number. First time, best time, 496 and a quarter. Plenty of traders jumped on board. Guess what? Minutes later, they made a high of 497.05.04. Guess what? That is our base hit. We were holding a trailer. They didn't allow us to get any more out of it. That's fair enough. It doesn't matter. We booked the base hit and we went on to the next trade, which came just a few minutes later. By the way... We had some flip side stuff on the board early in the morning. We give both sides. We're equal opportunity, bulls and bears. We don't care which way it's going. We just want to get the numbers correct for the benefit of our members. What's the scoop this morning? 8.40. I'm in early. Chomping at the bit already. I see the setup. 496 and a quarter. Below 498, leg lower down to 496 and a quarter. Did some traders ride it down there from the pre-market? Yeah, I think they did. But I had a whole host of traders buy it down there for the base hit. There should be a bounce back, a bull bear battle, bounce back in the other direction. Scalp with potential. Our scalps represent five to seven ES handles, S&P points, 50 to 70 SPY cents. That's our version of a base hit. That's our minimum required base hit. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart, and double check the work. 938, 496.25, give or take, is the bounce back in the other direction place, even if they spike it. They only spiked it by a couple of pennies. They're officially in the zone. There's your base hit. You see what goes on here each and every day. It's the same routine over and over again. Why is that? Because there's a finite bucket, small bucket full of trades that happen early in the morning. Almost every single day, with minor exception, we know what that bucket looks like. We're waiting for one or more of those trades. And when we can identify the important numbers, the important places, and the trade setup, it's a recipe for, quote unquote, not air quotes, real quotes, the morning trade. About 10.03, the next zone is 495.85 
to 495, give or take, for another bounce back in the other direction. Are you kidding me? That's the second trade of the day as it relates to the long spider trade. Remember, there were others in the live room, like this one, Walmart. It was screaming up at the opening bell, big gap higher open. I had a zone from a formula perspective. They were at new highs. Look at the monthly chart. Look what's going on here. At new highs, forget about this number. It's not relevant any longer. But at new highs, how do you pick the price where they're going to stop going higher? It's very touch and go. We have numbers. We have formulas. We have mathematics. This is what the chart looked like for the live room members. We had traders short 179.46 in between, a little higher. The second number was 182.05. They didn't get there. They came tweener and in betweener. There's a midpoint, something about a midpoint. They got really a little bit past in between, but either way, it was resistance. When you look at the hourly chart, you get a nice tail work and you could ride that one down all day long, which traders did. Let's just call it 180 to 176, give or take. It's ballpark stuff. That's a nice trade from a day trade perspective just for showing up. You see what I'm saying? Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. Resistance is in here, support is in here, the whole kit and caboodle. Roku was an inside the number live room trade this morning. 66.09. Low of day, exactly $66 even. This candle came back for a retest, $66 even. But right away, you could see they gave you the bounce. Doesn't look like much on this chart, but the high in this candle is $67.70. $67.70, that's a $1.60 something bounce in a matter of minutes. We had Buku profits in Roku in the live trading room this morning. Equal opportunity traders. Yes, we did. 683 in NVIDIA this morning. Big bounce, traders profit, NVIDIA. What's going on over in Camp IWM, my favorite market leading indicator? Coming back toward home base. Here, home base isn't the same as it is in the spiders. Why is that? Because the spiders haven't hit home base in a while. Here, IWM has hit home base in a while, which makes it less important. Something that hasn't been visited in a while is much more important than something that is. It goes under the guise of first time, best time, ask the live room members. Here you also have a bout of lower highs. Here, short term, they made a higher high, but you still have lower highs from the recent high that was in December. But when you look at the weekly chart, what are they doing? Is there anything really wrong with this? Aren't they just eating time off the clock? That doesn't mean that from here, from 198, 199, all the way down to the moving averages at 190, 191, that doesn't mean that's not painful for someone long. It is. That doesn't mean there's not opportunity on the way down. That doesn't mean there's not opportunity when they get there. All I'm saying is, for now, taking the market at face value, when you just draw a channel, that wasn't meant to be. There's the hypothesized channel that I'm talking about. It doesn't have to be exactly from high to low and all that stuff. It's just a channel. They're trading in a channel. They can come down to the bottom. They can break out of the top. If they break out of the top, that tells you obviously one thing. If they come down to the bottom, it's just still in the channel and it's still bullish above all the moving averages. It's interpretation of the chart from a long-term perspective. It's very important to understand where you are. Where have you heard that before? What else is important with the IWM is that it was down relative weakness today against the S&P down 1.38% today against the S&P, down a little over half a percent. We take note of that, my favorite market leading indicator. Second favorite market leading indicator, the folks down at the transportation department. More relative weakness against the S&P. My favorite canary in the coal mine, A number one, down just over 1% today. So you can see here, pretty obvious, right now they found support at this pivot low today. Break this pivot low, you have a breakup candle low, 
and you have a set of moving averages below and another important low. So you could say between the breakup candle low and this low here, which is from the day before and which is also below the moving averages in that zone is a bona fide bounce back in the other direction place if they got there sooner than later if they got there tomorrow slash maybe even the next day nobody would want it but that's where the tape would bounce from a djt perspective write it down put it on a sticky note what's the corresponding area in the iyt we don't know because the iyt chart always looks different Use the DJT. If it's down there, you can pull the trigger in the IYT wherever it is. What about the Q people? They hopped out below the 20 period moving average. Interesting. They opened on it today, closed below it. Of note, puzzle piece, it's on the table. What's that line? 421.88. It's unfinished business. It's an open gap. Why do I have it there? Same reason I had the SPY open gap unfinished business on the table an opportunity to fill the gap they didn't do it they chose not to do it smells like a rope dope write that down weekly chart way above all the moving averages was extended from home base we know that we talk about it all the time what are they doing now maybe they're eating time off the clock slash coming down toward home base home base is creeping up the price that's the 20 period moving average which is the red sloping trend line that's normal garden variety stuff markets go up they pull back they go up they pull back they go up they pull back that doesn't change the longer term uptrend put that on a side sticky note as well anything wrong with the financials no Ran a test in the neighborhood slash vicinity of the last breakup candle low in the sequence. They're above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. If the financials are not unraveling or falling apart, there's nothing structurally and technically wrong with the market. Down 11 cents today, a quarter of 1%, a third of 1%. We're not going to make a federal case out of that. In the trading parlance, that's called a down day about smash mouth they were getting creamed earlier they finished still down two percent which is heavy what did they do pretty obvious they ran a test of the 20 period moving average had a pretty stout bounce away what else is over there well remember this last breakout area they've already come down to run a test of that but that's also the same place which was right above that 20 period moving average interesting and funny how that works Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you? Without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.